All right. In this last video, I'm going to be talking about the the old uh, they say and the academic conversation that we've talked about in this course before in a different light. That often in the academic publication process, um, that conversation that you're entering actually begins with a dialogue or a conversation between you uh, as the author of the paper uh, in dialogue with um, your peers, just usually just two or three um, peer reviewers. And this is a very important part of the, the, the validation process of, of, um, of publishing research. And so we're going to talk about how to reply to reviewers and, and what you can expect from the review process and how to structure a reply and also how not to. So <laughs> uh, soon when you, hopefully when you uh, submit your, after you submit your, your research for the first time, you will receive something like this in your email box, this um, subject here of um of uh in the, of decision decision on this manuscript you always get a manuscript number when you submit to a journal and this decision obviously you know <laughs> can be uh, the one you want or or your most feared especially if you've spent a long long time you know on your doctoral research um, or your master's research, whatever, and, and there's a lot riding on it. This R1 here refers to uh, review, the first round of reviews. And uh, it's, it's almost like you can just hear the sort of Jaws, uh, uh, the Jaws soundtrack or whatever in the background hearing this do -do 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 -do, because you know that it's either going to be as it's either going to be what you want or it's going to be something that's just going to, you know, take a bite out of uh, your, <laughs> your self-esteem and your self-worth or whatever. And that shouldn't be the case. But especially if you're, an, uh, if you're an early career researcher, it can be a scary thing to receive this, this email. And, but um, surely in most cases, uh, if you're watching this video, what you're going to get is actually good news. And I want to talk to you about what that good news is. And as you make this face, when you open it, and you can read and decide if the following is good news. Let's read it together. Uh, manuscript ID, blah, 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 entitled the phrasal expressions list, which you submitted to apply linguistic has now been reviewed. The comments of the reviewers are included at the bottom of this letter. The reviewers have spotted positive things to say about the submission, but are widely divided on it. They suggest some major revisions, and I would like you to read the reviews carefully and take, in, take account of what they say in your revisions. The main problems are an, an inadequate discussion of theoretical and terminological issues and the wisdom and feasibility of providing decontextualized lists for some kind of general English. I have to say, I have a great deal of sympathy with this last point. I would like any revision to contain a very strong justification for this enterprise. I would be grateful if you could address these in the text and in a letter to me in your resubmission. And so when you receive an email like this with the decision, and, the, and you should be looking for this keyword here, this, this keyword right here, because it's cause for celebration. It means that they want you to, to resubmit. And the reason that that should be cause for celebration, even though the rest of this seems sort of, oh no, they want me to change it, and is because any seasoned academic author, any, anybody who's, been, who's published, um, has, a, has a track record of publishing, knows that first of all, it's very, very normal to, to, ha to be asked to revise your work. It's very rarely the case it's, it, that you get reviews back saying, don't change anything. We love it the way it is. It's really, really rare. Um, because you're dealing with two separate um, and independent blind 
peer reviewers who don't know each other or, or don't know that they're reviewing the same work and they're looking at it from their own from their own perspectives and and so often um, they have their own opinion about things they want they, they, they have their own uh, changes they want to make and I have to say right now that in all cases um, when I have got I've been asked to to um, to revise and resubmit the manuscript has been the better for it, it they, there's those comments actually serve to improve the quality of the manuscript but the most important thing for our purposes here is that when you when you see this word here resubmit you should celebrate it's time to pop open the champagne because it means that you have a very 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 good chance of publishing at the end of this road if, if you can go back and you can make those changes then um, you have a good chance there are cases when changes are not possible and then you might have to argue your case and, and, and that may, that's a subject for a different video, really, that there are cases in which you can plead to the editor and say, well, you know, I can't go back and redo this experiment or these, these data have already been collected. I can't change the data. Maybe by pleading to the editor, you might be able to still have a way through. But in, in most cases, the, the suggestions made by the peer reviewers are also taking into account that the changes they're asking for are doable. And so if you're asked to revise and resubmit, it, it's it's actually a, it's actually good news. Here's another example from a, a different journal article I published. This one from the ELT Journal, um, and they just say, you know, here are the comments at the bottom of the letter. They say the reviewers have identified a number of areas where changes will be necessary before we can consider your manuscript for further for manuscript further for publications. I would like to invite you to respond to the reviewers' comments and revise your manuscript. However, I must emphasize that this is not an offer of publication. And you know, reviewers who are not experienced will see something like this and might, they might feel uh, discouraged. Oh, excuse me. They might feel they might feel discouraged when they see something like this, thinking, "Oh, well, you know, I've been rejected." They may even think, or uh, "This is they don't like my manuscript." Don't take this personally. It's these people may not even know who you are because it's a blind review. They don't know who the author is, um, and uh, and unfortunately, one of the most common reasons an article never makes it through to publications because authors simply just don't re don't revise and resubmit like they should. They have these orphans of science, um, so many of them out there. Um, so the, the editor here says, however, I must emphasize that this is not offered for publication. We really hope that you will rework your article to take account of these points, but your rewritten version will have to be considered um, by members of the panel in its own terms and in the light of the revisions request. In order to be treated as a resubmission, rewritten articles must be received within six months. Could you bear in mind during rewriting that our guide length for contributions is 3,500 words and that the maximum number of references should be 15? So, I mean, uh, the length and all that aside, they are they they haven't rejected the article, and they're saying just take into this point take these points into account and resubmit. That's good news. It's time to celebrate because I know, and that if I revise and I resubmit and I did, that at the end of that road, I have a good chance of getting published. And I did. So, how should you not reply to reviewers? First of all, don't be defensive. Um, this is very, very common be because obviously one is dealing with one's egos. There are egos involved in, in science just like there are anywhere else. But also because, especially if this is your first publication and or something that derives from a, 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 an extensive research project such as one would have, with a doctoral dissertation or master's thesis, um, that it's tempting to take it personally um, and and to reply with emotion, uh, to to imbue your text with phrasing like, "Well, clearly they didn't understand the point of this," and that kind of thing. Try to be dispassionate. Um, and disinterested in your reply. Do reply, 
to every single point or at least most of them in your in your response to reviewers make sure that uh, you you address them no matter how you address them whether you, you make a change or not do do make it clear that you are addressing all the concerns or all the points and don't automatically agree with all the criticisms because um, that sort of acquiescence doesn't mean that you have a better chance of being published it, it, it just it, it can actually sound disingenuous uh, you if there is something about your research which a reviewer has misinterpreted or or you feel strongly about that it shouldn't be changed or whatever make that point just argue it make sure that you stick to your guns and um, and make it clear why you disagree or you, you but without being without replying with emotion do start always by thanking the reviewers this is not just fluff but because reviewers do take time out of their day to do it and they do this in most cases without any sort of financial compensation do recognize the, the effort that they put into it but it's also you know being polite uh, reply to all the key comments and if you don't agree as i said before do stand your ground and respond specifically and i would also add in an organized way and i'll show you what i mean in a second make it clear to the reviewers that you have taken into account their points and if you do that then the reviewers are going to more likely than not be sympathetic to your research they'll 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 look at it and say okay this person has reviewed my own review they've they've, they've taken into account my comments they've dealt with it they've talked about how they've dealt with it and therefore hey you know if they've dealt with the things my concerns then this should be published so uh, here is um, an example. So I, here is my re my reply to our reviewers, doing what I told you just a second ago, thanking them. Thank you for the constructive comments made regarding the manuscript. They were very useful. And all points were given careful consideration. Now you couldn't just stop there. You actually have to say how. But this is just uh, providing some 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 introduction to those comments. Please find specific replies to each concern below. And so here in this particular format, um, what I did was I quoted the exact concern from the reviewer. So here you have reviewer one. There's always, in most cases, there's two reviewers. Sometimes it was three or more, but usually it's two. Reviewer one comment, quote, the statement that since formulaic language is associated with identity needs clarification. Okay, author reply. So this is me replying. This point is drawn from a lengthy discussion around how formulaic expressions relate to a particular model of fluency in Norman Segalowitz's cognitive basis of second language fluency. Here in one, here is one relevant excerpt. Languages afford, afford their users particular ways of, for promoting the interests of the self, including repertoire of fixed formulaic and partially fixed expressions. However, fluency in the L2 will develop only to the extent that the user's motivation succeeds in bringing him or her into contact situations that are appropriate for learning to take place this however is more of a theoretical position than an empirical one and to make that point clearer the wording of the manuscript has been altered as follows so then i put the what it was originally original wording paragraph one uh, page one paragraph one furthermore sigalowitz's da -da -da, and this refers course to what I mentioned here argues that since formulaic language associated with identity and access then the change in manuscript is furthermore so Galowitz theorizes because the point is that it's a theoretical um, uh, assertion theorizes that since formulaic language is associated with identity so instead of instead of the original wording which is that he argues which would point to something that is based on um, maybe some sort of evidence that what i'm reporting in actuality is a theoretical argument 
Sigalowitz makes that I also incorporate into incorporated into my research. And so very simply and very clearly, I first of all acknowledge um, the point by saying this is what I'm dealing with. I explain my thinking. I also make it clear, reminding the reviewer of what it was before and then how I've actually acted on the, the query by the reviewer. And so it may seem excessive. It may seem um, um, overly um, detailed, but this sort of care sends the message to the reviewer that, aha, he has dealt with my suggestions. And so if you did it a different way, if, if for example, I had simply written, thank you for the, thank you for the suggestions, I took many of them into account, and I hope that you find the review uh, um, satisfactory. Well, that would first make the reviewer go back to the, already irritate the reviewer having to go back to the manuscript, find what the differences were and, and how it was changed. But also um, might make the reviewer think, okay, well, may, have they actually dealt with what I, what I suggested? And here it's crystal clear that I have. Here it's crystal clear that I've, I've paid close attention and acknowledged and heeded uh, their suggestions and I've made changes on the basis of their suggestion, explaining the rationale for each. Now all of this can take a while because you have to rewrite the manuscript, send it back to review. In some cases they may want even further changes and ask another couple of questions then the journal will send it back again, then you've got to polish it again. This may happen even a few times. It may take a year in some journals, um, in some disciplines, it can take up to two years to finally get your research out there. It may take a while, but you'll get there and it's worth it. Um, just know that when you receive that email with that decision to revise and resubmit, at the end of that journey, you have your reward and it's worth, and it's worth doing that. Don't be afraid of it go for it. And then you finally get a different email, like this one here, which I even share on my social media pages sometimes. I am happy to be writing to accept your manuscript and title of phrasal expressions list in this current form for publication in bilinguistics. The comments of the reviewers who reviewed your manuscript are included at the effort. We hope, it, hope to publish it in an issue of bilinguistics later this year. Yay! And another one, uh, I am pleased, this is the same manuscripts I showed earlier, I am pleased to be able to accept the revised version of your manuscript entitled Framework for Inclusion of Multiple Expressions. At present, your article is scheduled for the volume blah blah blah. In the meantime, it will be published online for advanced access. And here you see the reward for going through that kind of arduous process of dealing with reviewers. Um, but it, in the end, it's all worth it. What happens for uh, people with less experience in the publication world um, is they feel a lot of stress. And um, this is outlined in a, in a study that was conducted by Dooley and Sweeney in 2017 and reported in the Chronicle of Higher Education. That I compare it to this, this stress that arises. Imagine um, Imagine you send a, a text message, like for example, through WhatsApp, where you, you send a message and you, can, you see that it's been received. Um, and so you know if the person has received the message, you're just waiting for a reply. Now, if you're just sending a, a plain old message about, oh, let's go have lunch, and you see that the, the person has read your message and has not replied, it's no big deal if it's low stakes lunch. But, Let's say that that lunch invitation actually has more behind it. Let's say that um, you're inviting someone to have lunch because you want to talk about something that has career um, implications for you. Well, then if you send that message and the person doesn't reply, um, and you see that because the, there's those little check marks at, at the bottom of the message that indicate the person has read the message, and you don't see the and you see the person has read it but hasn't replied. It may generate some kind of stress, and then you may go every day to check to see if you know why hasn't the person replied. 
what's going on here. The longer the person takes, the more stress you may feel. And that's what happens in the academic publishing world too. Uh, for a lot of the, uh, early career researchers where they, if, they are, if they're unfamiliar with the publication process, if they don't have a lot of publications under their belt, especially if it's their first major article they're submitting, and they submit to a journal, they, they get the acknowledgement that they've submitted and they just have to play the waiting game where they have to wait to see what the journal says. And, and <laughs> like that, that um, messaging system, they'll, they might want to, they'll go into the, the editorial system and check to see what, pri what, what, where it is along the process of the, of the, um, of the review and uh, process and to see if there's any decision. And it can generate a lot of stress. And as Julian Sweeney pointed out, they say that those with less experience wait for the editor editorial decision most anxiously. Those with least experience are sometimes overconfident. Um, and that can also be dangerous because obviously if you receive uh, an email then that says that your manuscript needs to be uh, revised, that can just kind of be a blow. Having at least one success makes the way easier. This is cl clear why, because if you, if you, if you know, if you've been through that process I described a little a few minutes ago, where you reply to reviewers and then ultimately it leads to publication, then you know that it can take a while, but you get there. And if you don't have that and you have a lot riding on that first publication, then um, you don't have you don't have that experience and it, and you and you feel like you need to get that under your belt it can obviously contribute negatively to um, levels of anxiety. Um, first authors, meaning the first author on a co-authored paper, may feel the most anxious due to the investment because it's their name first. If in many cases, um, the, the PIs or um, principal investigators or, or advisors uh, may, uh, I can yield first authorship to their students, their advisees, or more junior uh, research um, uh, researchers in their labs, and and they and they already have a lot of research under the belt anyway, and so they they it's a win win for them if it's there's somebody else would as a first author and uh, that person is most invested in it. Um, and if it gets published, great, their name is on it. If not, oh well, um, they didn't have a lot to do. But if obviously if you're a first author, and if you're if you're not that experience as a researcher, there's a lot riding on it. And there's high stakes for you. There's a lot of investment, and so the anxiety level is uh, reflects that. Um, a moderating variable is the importance of the manuscript. So if if that manuscript uh, for you is one in which that is the main part of your doctoral dissertation, for example, and is one that um, kind of around which you've built your entire entire identity of as a researcher, um, and you really have something that really that you feel is really important that you want to say to the world through your manuscript. Well, then clearly um, that can generate even more anxiety. And uh, those who have experience and they know what, how, the, how that whole story plays out between the back and forth between journals, um, then they're less likely to give up and you shouldn't give up. And so we come back to the very beginning of this course where we started and how throughout your life, if you're watching this video, you've had to deal with gatekeeping. Um, when before you got into your undergrad uh, university, then to grad school and so on, you've had to try to show your worth each time. And and of course, um, you got through. You you got through your undergrad. You got into your master's. You got into your you got into your, your doctoral degree program, and um, and you have spent a lot of your academic life looking for that acceptance and your motivation for taking this course in part was that was that as well. You want your manuscript to be accepted. You want your work to be accepted and published. Um, and that means that in your academic life, you've had to, you had, had to face down rejection at all those levels. Um, and now you have this, you may have this fear of rejection once more. Uh, and rejections happen, they do. Um, 
and it doesn't mean that you should give up. Uh, and hopefully, after taking this course, uh, you won't ever face a rejection because you have you will have increased your chances of knowing how and why rejections happen. But the point is, is that 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 in that lack of familiarity with the publication process, not having that first publication under your belt, increases that fear of rejection and anxiety. Um, and but you should be looking uh, down the road and how through that first publication and further publications, you'll see that your identity is not wrapped up into one manuscript submission. It's actually something that you build over time. Um, and it's a community of practice that you're entering and, and, and a, that are having, this community of practice is having a constant conversation with each other and that you will enter that conversation if you just keep at it. And so, as I've mentioned uh, throughout this course and as I started with this course, the acceptance that you're looking for is not just uh, for a, a manuscript to be published. It's acceptance of you, of that story of you that you want to build, acceptance of you and your ideas, acceptance of the things that you have to say. And yes, you do that through the, the work that you publish, and it is obviously an important, important part of one's research identity. But try to keep in mind that uh, when you publish, and, and you will get published, that even though it's a, it's, a, it's a citation, it's something you put on your CV, really what it comes down to is this. These, that you're sharing your ideas, that you're sharing your thoughts, you're sharing you um, and your contributions with a particular community of practice, with a, an academic community of your colleagues, the same ones that will be reviewing your work. And so um, what I hope is that what this, what this course has given you is uh, at least a bit more concreteness as to how to make that happen, how to make your voice heard. I hope that it has helped increase your level of confidence because it's less of a mystery now to you what is involved in thinking about your research, about actually writing your research, and then the, the actual publication process itself. And in that demystifying, um, hopefully you've gained confidence, and I really sincerely hope um, that you can now step up to that mic and make and make your research heard by the audience that you want to hear it. I look forward uh, to seeing your research and from hearing from you and that that same dialogue that you will be engaging in now. I hope that we, that we can keep it up over the years um, and that this is just the beginning of a relationship that we have as colleagues. Um, in, the, in the years to come. I wish you all lots of success and uh, I hope that this course has benefited you. Again, that's managed to increase your confidence. Uh, I can't, I wish I could, but I can't write the article for you, but I hope that this course has helped you um, write that article yourself and, uh, and started you on the publication journey to acceptance. I wish you all the best. Mm -hmm.